yo 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 what is going on guys finally gonna be answering um, the questions that you guys left me on Instagram um, my Instagram David ASAP I asked you guys a while ago to uh, ask me any personal questions and uh, I think I got about 170 comments sorry for the delay I'm gonna be getting into it now I'll try to be as entertaining as possible and uh, kind of be straight to the point with my questions all right so one that I see a lot is um, when did you start getting into cars? And when I kind of saw myself starting to get into cars was uh, in junior high. I wasn't really born a car person. I, it kind of just grew on me over time. I'd say grade eight or nine. Um, I uh, kind of started looking more at cars. and Pretty much around the time when I was able to, almost able to get my license, I really started looking into cars and getting into them. Another question that gets asked a lot is, uh, what got me into JDM cars? So, um, Really, what kind of got me into JDM cars is like, just kind of looking into them. Like, I always thought they were cool cars and everything, and I knew they were pretty quick. The turning point that actually initiated me to want to get one definitely was, uh, there's this person in Japan, his name's Smokey Nagata, and uh, he puts up, he has like this twin turbo, like 800 horsepower, top secret Supra, and he has a bunch of other top secret cars. And pretty much, he does these uh, top speed highway runs on this one on this highway in Japan called the Wangan Highway, and like he reaches speeds of like 300 kilometers an hour, like 330, 340, and um, like yeah, those videos I kind of just they grew on me. I'll, I'll cut to a clip right now of like the Smoky Nagata videos that I stumbled upon, and then um, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. We finally made it overseas to England. The option staff followed Smokey here on its strange quest for high-speed runs. He looks like a mild-mannered fellow, but in fact, he likes to pull really crazy stunts. Everywhere he goes, one burnout after another. He travels to other countries just to waste away tire rubber. He's a lunatic, I'm telling you. He brought his car all the way to England to do what? Yes, you guessed it. A top speed attack. With complete disregard for the existing laws in any country he goes to, Smokey just wishes to fulfill his need for speed. In England, even stopping off to the side of the road will get you busted. The penalties for a speed violation are very severe here considered a felony conviction or even imprisonment. And Smokey wants to do a 200 mile per hour run. We tried to stop him, but off he went. 900 horsepower on tap with two bar of boost. He keeps spinning tires all the way to fifth gear. Smokey desperately tries to lay the power down to the pavement. Let's take a look at the onboard camera. Even under the wet conditions, Smokey steadily keeps on the gas. That's Smokey's style. The cars around him look like they aren't moving. He's going super fast. Just when Smokey was satisfied with his run, he gets some company. Oh no. British cops try to catch up with their go-karts. It only sucks what? if you get caught. What? Do you think this is a playground? Uh, not in the sun No, I'm sure you don't. So yeah, all those videos, like those Japanese style, like Smoky Nagata highway runs, like top speed, those definitely influenced me. After seeing those, I was like, I gotta get a JDM. You know, there's, you can make them so quick, they're so sweet. I love the Japanese like style. Ever since then, I kind of just migrated into JDM cars. I don't see myself getting bored with them, and uh, yeah, they're fun cars. That's about it for that. Um, <clears throat> another common question is how do I, how do we find all these JDM like right-hand drive cars? It's pretty simple. For those people that uh, don't really know the importing process or live somewhere where they can't import vehicles, um, it's really easy just like a business like any other business there's literally people's jobs that are to bring cars from Japan to anywhere in the world 
So literally it's as easy as giving somebody money, sending them a auction pick of what car you want, and then um, they bid on it. If your budget is high enough and you win the car, they send it over, it's as easy as that. A lot of trust in the process, I guess. You gotta find a reputable importer. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's as easy as just spending money and buying a car. Just the downside is you don't actually get to see the car, obviously, because it's in Japan. You just got to trust the pictures and the person you're importing through. And uh, really examine those auction pictures because they're really the only thing you can go by. What material do you guys use for the splitters and like the diffusers? We use ABS plastic. Yeah, we use ABS plastic. There's a store nearby that uh, sells bulk sheets of plastic. So we just buy that and cut it up. What was my first car and first mod? My actual first car that was only mine was a Honda Civic EX sedan, I believe. It was blue. And, uh, you know, being your first car, like your first real car, I just hopped onto eBay and, like, bought the classics of the uh, short ram air filter with, like, the blue pod filter, you know, headers, downpipe, uh, nightshade for the taillights, you know, all your classic ricer package type deal. Dream car. Asking a car guy for their dream car is kind of a hard question because there's so many that I'd like to own and experience before actually like choosing one but I don't know there's like big boy cars big boy dream cars which is like the uh, you know like the Lamborghinis or like the Ferraris or there's like the tuner dream cars and like daily dream cars I don't know it's a pretty hard question there's so many that I pick and I want to kind of experience all the cars first before Committing, you know, to a dream car. Do I regret selling the R34? Uh, no, I don't. This is the thing about making a decision. You know, I kind of thought it through before it was done fully. I was done with the R34. The only way I'd keep it is if I had the money for this car and the R34. But, you know, I already experienced it. I had it for a few years. I don't have regrets of selling it. Yes, it was, uh, it was a better car, obviously, engine-wise and transmission-wise, diff and brakes because like you're comparing an r34 gtt rb25 det neo to a spec s um s15 that only has the nasr 20 de and uh you know they're not even comparable platforms because of the models it was a fun experience you know got to enjoy the car got to do a lot of things to it i had the opportunity to try different things with the r34 you know it's an awesome car for sure but no i don't regret selling it you know there's no point of regretting anything you do because once it's done, it's done. You can't really do anything. STI or Evo, uh, to be honest, this is a tough one because I'd probably choose the STI for like looks as a car. I think they look really good. It's kind of weird. Blah Bye is my favorite gen and like, it's not very many people's favorite gen, but uh, I definitely like the Blah Bye. But Evo for sure for engine and power because you can drop 10 grand into an Evo and be pushing like so much like five six maybe 700 horsepower and you could drop 10 grand into a Subaru like a boxer engine and you know you're you're not even up there in numbers they're so hard to build um, boxer engines unless you do all internals like money value they're not worth building I mean unless you absolutely love the car and it's like your dream car and you're never gonna get rid of it and you want it forever then I would you know but for just the basic STI versus EVO, I pick STI for looks and then EVO for performance. What's the next car I want? This is a tough one for sure because there are a few that I'm looking at. Um, yeah, I definitely want to try different platforms of JDM cars as well. Um, but nothing that really uh, pops top of my head right away um, when I think about it. But we'll see. It'll be in the videos for sure, so stay tuned. Are you going to come to So Clean in Montreal? Um, I'm guessing that's an event in Montreal. This kind of, I'll kind of tie this in to um, if we're going to go anywhere in the world for any events or anything like that. We, all of us would love to travel anywhere in the world to uh, car events or any meets or like anything really. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, how far it is and like money and if our cars will make it. Like I said early on, if there's any ever, if there's ever any company that wants to fly us out, we'd all love to go. We'd hop on that opportunity right away. Next summer though, stay tuned because we, uh, kind of a big announcement, it's still in the works, but next season we want to kind of do like a little tour where we drive around and uh, basically we're going to start in our province of Alberta 
we're gonna head west to uh, BC like Golden BC then Vancouver then head down into the states I don't know how many states we're gonna go down like Montana possibly like further down we'll see how far we go down into the states but we definitely want to do like a little tour and uh, hopefully meet a lot of you guys like if you guys don't mind traveling um, north a few states if you live uh, really south just to meet up with us, you know, say hi. We'll have a sick car meet, you know, stuff like that. Meet up with you guys. I think that'd be awesome. Let me know below if you guys would be interested in that and if you'd be willing to drive over to hang out. Yeah, and keep in mind, this will be next summer, so. The fastest car I've ever driven. Fastest car I've ever driven. I don't know, because like, I don't have official numbers of the cars that I've driven, you know. There's just a whole bunch of awesome cars. Like, they all react differently. Obviously, a V8's gonna feel different than, like, an inline six. So, I don't know really what the fastest car I've driven is. And I don't know officially which one is the fastest, though. My dream engine swap would probably be, um, either, probably either a 1J or 2J. I don't know. They're just obviously the iconic Japanese engine. And, like, I never owned a car that had one. And obviously, there's so much potential with those engines. So those would be cool to own definitely as a dream swap. What do you think of blast pipes on a muscle car? You know, if it's your car, you have a muscle car and you like blast pipes, just do it. I know it's considered like a JDM thing, a JDM mod, but you know, it's your car, do what you want. You know, otherwise your car is going to be boring and it's going to have no character. So uh, if you want to do blast pipes, do blast pipes. What got you into YouTube videos and how did you get yourself noticed? Honestly, I've been involved in youtube for so long like so many years and i've kind of had a dream of having a big channel like this um for a long time i just didn't know how to do it what the content would be locals was a group before the youtube videos came um you know for like a year before a year and a half before the videos even came out we were a solid group and then i just brought the camera along because uh yeah i saw similar channels to what locals is on youtube i was like damn this is like us might as well bring the camera that's kind of when I started uh, videotaping everything we did, skipping work, my real job, just to film stuff. The channel was growing, but just at an average rate at this point, but it was still growing, so I kind of viewed that as motivation. So I never got it off of my mind. Even in school, I would just remember like just sitting in class, zoned out, thinking about YouTube, you know, and the teacher would call on me like to answer a question after the, like during this lecture, and I'd just be there like blank faced, like no idea what she just said because you know, I'm zoned out thinking about YouTube the whole day. The whole day, literally. Um, so, yeah, I definitely, like, obsessed over it, I guess. Which you kind of have to do to achieve any goal, really. You have to be fully committed to it. And uh, I find that you have to obsess over it. And just find every single way possible to achieve what it is. Whatever your goal is, you know. And just having it in your mind consistently is a big factor in that. Kind of answer more how I got myself noticed. How I got the channel noticed was uh, consistent uploads for sure. Um, you know, just the classic. Literally, YouTube has a whole section about how you can grow your videos. Like, you know, you listen to people that have done it and find their tips. Because literally, there's so many people that have done it. So, you know, like... Say, for example, you want to learn how to skateboard. Who do you go to? You know, you find someone that knows how to skateboard and you learn from them what they did, what they do, because they've already learned the process. They know what works, what doesn't work. So, you know, whether it be in person, you meet a skateboarder and talk to them or a YouTube video, uh, you're going to find your answers with simple research. And same thing goes with like wanting to grow a big channel. Literally research what people have said that have big channels and what they've done to grow their channels you know and uh you're gonna find consistent answers like uh you know consistent uploads attractive titles and thumbnails not necessarily clickbait like accurate grabs viewers attention make sure your quality is good obviously because people are gonna aren't gonna want to watch like a video with bad audio or visual aspects make sure your the quality is decent doesn't have to be amazing make sure editing's decent make sure you're consistent little stuff like that will definitely like get your channel out there i say just stick with it keep trying upload no matter what because a lot of people like will have a video and they're like oh i don't know if this is good enough i don't want to put this up just put it up anyway just keep busting out the videos that's all i gotta say any plans on putting a rocket bunny kit on the s15 um i don't have any wide body plans right now or for next summer but possibly the summer after that i don't know about rocket bunny kit but you know we'll see what the future holds and what i decide to do with it 
Did you ever think that the Locals brand would ever be as big as it is today? People like me from Tennessee buying merch and putting it on our cars and wearing your clothes. What do you think of all that? It definitely is crazy. I did not expect the whole thing to kind of excel as quick as it did. You know, that's what the law of attraction does, but uh, it's just so, it's still so surreal to not just me, but all of us that there's people worldwide willing to represent the band, like the movement that we all go for. And like, we're so happy that you guys enjoy the videos and really truly enjoy watching them and enjoy supporting the brand and want to be a part of locals because yeah, all of us really appreciate it. And it, you know, it surprises us every day that have this much of a, influence on like so many people worldwide it's just so awesome that we have the supporters that we do have and all the subscribers all the people that comment and like we're just so thankful for all you guys yeah it's like mind-boggling still at times but once again we're so thankful for all you guys um for all the support you guys give us what are your goals for 2017 um i have a lot of goals um i'm gonna work towards um, you know, there's like physical goals, there's mental goals, there's financial goals. You know, I'm not going to get too into it, but know that I have goals and all of you guys should have goals and take steps towards reaching them. Do you plan on owning a Subaru? Um, I don't plan on it, but if one pops up for like a great deal, definitely scoop one up. Would you ever build up a Civic or Integra? Yes, I would. Stay tuned. What other visual mods do you have planned for the S15? As of right now, I think it's pretty much done other than like little things that'll pop up online or locally that I'll be like, okay, I'll scoop this up. I'll get this, this looks good. But um, you know, other than the, like the main parts, I think I pretty much have everything. So I can finally start getting into the performance aspect of this car. Long awaited, it's perfect too, because I finished the visual stuff right before winter. So I kind of have all of winter to prep for the swap. How has your day been? My day's been great, thank you. If you were to sell the S15, what car would you get next and why? This is the same question as I answered before, I don't know, I just, I'd have to think about it. I kind of like, there's a period of time where I kind of think of what car I want and then one will kind of come to me that I'm like, okay, I could see myself owning this and like building this the way I want. It kind of happens like that. What is your recommendation for a best first or second car? You can't go wrong with anything Honda. Civic, Integra, or a Miata. Little low horsepower car, um, <clears throat> depending on where you live, because the best driver's car to learn on would be a manual, um, rear wheel drive, really light and ho low horsepower car. So you kind of get to learn how to maneuver a car, take it through some corners and learn like the driving aspects, have a feel for shifting, you know, or auto, because autos are great to learn on. I think everybody gets an auto, like mostly for their first car. My first car was auto. Don't got to worry about shifting when you're still learning the aspects and the rules of the road. So find an auto car first, then manual, unless you're a big baller, then go straight to manual. And then uh, from then on, as you keep going to your next, next car, they should be up in power. Your S15 needs power. When are you going to actually put some horsepower into it? Like I just answered, uh, turbo build this winter and then the swap. Hopefully, uh, hopefully beginning of next season. <clears throat> Where do you work? So I'm actually blessed enough to have locals as my full-time job. You know, I have um, the YouTube channels and then um, the local store. It's an amazing job. It's a dream job. I've always, like, when I was working my previous job at uh, Canadian Tired, like, just busting tires over and over and over again, I was like, I wanted a dream job where I got paid to do what I love to do and I'm doing. And then I thought like, what do I love to do? I love to cruise with my buddies. I love to hang out with my buddies. I like to like, work on cars. You know, I like to progress. So I really love YouTube and all these things. Like, I was like, I wanna get paid for this. And I don't know how it was gonna happen, but I was like, I wanted it to happen. You know, I really wanted this dream job <clears throat> and I didn't really know how to get there. So that's kind of what I went, that's kind of why I went full force with YouTube because I wanted it to work. I wanted it to work out so bad, to the point where I stopped showing up for my real job, and then it eventually paid off. Where I'm able to use this as my full-time job, and it's amazing. You know, I can't thank you guys enough. What would be my dream daily and my dream track car? So yeah, this is kind of a better like question of asking dream cars because they kind of give uh, categories of what my dream car would be. So daily, I would love something VIP. That's kind of like a boat, if you will, on bags. Um, you know, some nice wheels, tint, some junction produce. Um, for a track car, I wouldn't mind this car as a track car. Just stiffen up the chassis, more power obviously, secure things a little bit better 
It'd be a pretty awesome track car. Where do you guys get your stickers, t-shirt made? Um, it's all local. We could, there's kind of businesses and friends here that do the printing and cutting for us. So favorite and least favorite part about your car? Least favorite would definitely be the power. And favorite thing would be, I don't know, it's like, it's my first coupe. I've only owned sedans my whole life. So I like the fact that it's a coupe, it's more sporty. Um, I do get pulled over in this car more than in the R34 because I guess it's a, it's a coupe and it does look more sporty and uh, you know if cops see it they're gonna draw be they're gonna like you know pay more attention to it whereas the R34 yeah it doesn't look like a totally normal car but it is a sedan it looks more family oriented so they're not gonna care too much they won't if they if there's cops that don't really know JDM cars they're not gonna know there's a fast engine in the R34 whereas if they look in this they're gonna assume it's quick with just the way it looks but little do they know this car is slow as shit where else would you live other than Canada definitely in the states like southern states overseas what I would need some adapting like if it was in Australia or like New Zealand or Tokyo or anywhere like that it'd be so cool to visit there for however long but Living there, I'd have to think about. Only place I can totally, only place I can like see myself living elsewhere than Canada would probably be the United States at this point. But we'll see how the election goes. What's the most reliable engine? Uh, overall, I'd probably have to say anything Honda, K20, K24, B18, even a D series. If you didn't choose the S15, what other car would you have chosen? This is hard, man. I really want an FD. Owning a car with a rotary is so much easier said than done. People that don't know rotaries and tell people to get rotaries don't, they don't know the actual work and effort that goes into owning a rotary car. I love the look of our NARC 7 FD and I love the sound, but just owning one and all the nightmare issues I've heard and maintenance and all that, you gotta seriously think about owning one before you commit to it because uh and you gotta have a lot of money saved up too in case anything goes wrong so i'd love to own an fd but it's it's actually like a long it can't be an impulse buy it you have to like think it through thoroughly but i'd love one what are your opinions on an s13 convertible would you ever get one yeah those are sweet uh my buddy bill just recently picked up a really clean one I don't see myself owning a convertible, but uh, they're definitely awesome cars. If you want to get one, definitely get one. The convertibles are more rare, I believe. So if you can pick one up, especially a clean one, I'd say go for it. What is it like to daily a right-hand drive car? Super easy, just like a left-hand drive car. Obviously, if you haven't done it, you think it's pretty uh, confusing and foreign, but it only takes about half an hour of driving just to get everything. Uh, the signals and the uh, washer fluid, like the wa window wipers, are on the opposite sides. But other than that, everything else is the same. What are we going to see in the future? Hopefully a lot of good stuff. A lot more builds, possibly different cars coming up here pretty soon. Uh, yeah, just more meets, more good times, more memories with the locals. So yeah, stay tuned for all that. Your buddies used to skate. Did any of you guys get sponsored or think of getting sponsored or making a career of it? Uh, yeah, we're kind of getting back into skateboarding, which is awesome because it was an old passion of mine and like early high school and like all of junior high, I always skateboarded and uh, it's so cool that we're getting back into it. Like Jesse just bought a new deck, um, you know, Birdie, Stan's kind of getting into it too. So it's so awesome to see people getting back into skateboarding. Um, obviously, I think, well, like I definitely wanted to get sponsored and I was kind of good, but I definitely wasn't good for a sponsor. Uh, Birdie said he had a couple friends that kept skating and they got some like AM deals like some like minor sponsorships but nothing huge. Um, right now I don't see myself working hard enough in skateboarding to be sponsored as that's not a huge goal of mine but I definitely want to get really good at it again. Uh, just learn more tricks and stuff like that. Would you ever consider traveling to New Zealand to see the car scene? 100% like I said if a company were to fly us out or sponsor us or something or we just end up having crap load of crowdfunded money or something to fly us over we will 100 percent do it what are locals future plans in terms of upcoming merch on the big cartel store new hoodies or windbreakers winter's coming yeah we got new hoodies pre-orders actually coming up this monday literally you're watching this right now on monday uh pre-orders will be open up for a week or five days just until friday and then uh, there's four colors like the red, maroon, dark, darkish blue, gray, and then black. 
Um, I can't wait for them to come in. So yeah, pre-orders are coming up. Definitely make sure you pick yours up if you want to get one. Windbreakers, I believe, also we're looking into. I don't think, they're not going to be out for Wave 4, this upcoming one. But uh, hoodies, 100%. We got um, snapbacks also. We just picked them up. Um, we still have a few shirts left over from the first run. Whole bunch of stickers, slaps for you guys to enjoy. We're going to be having a giveaway. Uh, bundle packages. Um, just to save you guys money stay tuned for the store opening. That's locals.bigcartel.com When will you get an LSD for the s15? Hopefully when I do the swap What are the first parts you recommend putting into a car kind of depends what kind of car it is, but uh, I'd say it's always good to kind of start under the hood if you're if you're not familiar with modding I'd say start with a, like a short ram or colder intake get some experience of like wrenching under the hood uh, do a few bolt-on mods and then possibly suspension afterwards, wheels, and just see uh, kind of what you want to progress yourself on your own car afterwards. If you want uh, more performance-wise, you know, kind of look into those parts. If you want more like stance, more of a stance kind of build, look into those parts. Chocolate or vanilla ice cream? Vanilla for sure, but cookies and cream over vanilla. RB or J engines? That's a really hard one. Probably J's at the end of the day. Thinking about starting a car group with my friends, kind of like locals. Uh, any advice? Just do it, round up the friends, make sure they're like-minded, make sure you guys have the same goal. You know, make sure you guys are all on the same page of what kind of group it's gonna be. Just, I say do it. Don't worry about branding, just worry about having a good time with your buddies, because that's what really having a group should be, right? It really is just hanging out with buddies, cruising, having a good time, building your cars together. So as long as all of you guys enjoy doing that and you're all friends, just do it. What is your winter beater? Um, it's going to be revealed in the next couple videos here, so stay tuned for that. Would you rather a 1J Nissan 240 or a LS1 Mustang for a drift car? Uh, I'd say the 1J 240. Where did you get your side skirts? They came with the car. Would you ever think about taking your car to the track? Drifting or time attack? Yeah, for sure, definitely. I'd love to try both of those, but got to get better at drifting um, before I kind of take it to a track. But time attack, but time attack would definitely be fun. I definitely want to try that. And drifting once I'm a bit better. Is the locals crew going to be doing a drift build? Hopefully, eventually, uh, we do want to do a drift build. We just got to find a good platform to start with, and then kind of a good site to get parts from, and like. You know, stuff like that. But hopefully that's something we can start to see next summer. Will you trade my Miata for your S15? I wouldn't trade, but I'd buy your Miata. What type of wing are you rocking? This is the uh, Origin Labs 350 mil, I believe. What made you pick an S15? Honestly, I don't know. They just kind of came to me one day where I was like attracted to them. And I was like, this is going to be my next car. So that's how that happened. It was pretty spontaneous. It wasn't a car that I've kind of wanted for a long time. It just came to me and I wanted it. So, yeah. Do you smoke weed? I don't. <laughs> for real though, I don't. I used to, but I don't anymore. Why don't you RB or Jay-Z swap the Sylvia? I already had an RB. Um, in the R34 and I kind of and I've driven RB20s and stuff like that the whole reason I got this S15 was to try new things different platforms uh, so I definitely want to try the SR engine and um, believe it or not Alex's uh, 1J swap was pretty hectic and uh, a lot of work and time went into it um, to the point where and it was so expensive so to the point where that's not going to be my first choice. I don't want to go all custom. Yeah, there may be kits to bolt it up, but I kind of want to go feel how the stock engine reacts with the car and then go from there, you know? We'll see what happens in the future with this car or my next car or whatever. But uh, I definitely want to try the SR20 DET. When are you coming to California? I'd love to come there. I've wanted to my whole life. Uh, we'll see how that summer tour driving around tour goes what type of camera slash editing software do you use slash suggest i just use my iphone until 100,000 subscribers and then i picked up a canon g7x expensive camera but worth it um and i started off with uh, windows movie maker for editing and now i'm using imovie so kind of up the game on both the camera and the editing software but anything anything will do as long as it, your video renders 
and your quality is decent. You don't need to ball out on expensive cameras and, hard, and uh, editing software. What type of wheels are you trying to find? Probably the Varstonius 2s, but we'll see. I'm kind of looking at other ones too. My dream wheels though would be the T37 SLs. Hopefully those pop up for like really cheap one day because yeah, those are my dream wheels. What's your nationality? I am actually Polish, Canadian, if that makes sense. I do get a lot of comments because people see my last name and they ask if I'm Polish, I am. What's your favorite type of faux? Saute beef, for sure, 100%. Are you thinking of painting or wrapping the Sylvia? Wrap, for sure. As for color, I don't have any idea yet. If you could pick any car as a drift car, what would you pick? Probably this car. Or an S13 240SX. Or a Miata. Is your car droney when you drive? Um, not really droney, but it sounds like crap right now because of the uh, exhaust leaks that I have. Would you ever consider supercharging the S15 instead of a turbo? Not really. Um, it'd be cool to supercharge a different car, but I don't even know if they have a kit and I wouldn't go through the trouble of custom building one, a supercharger kit for this car. Twin charging would be awesome though, um, but expensive and like hectic tuning. So uh, I don't know, we'll see what the future holds. How come I haven't seen you guys do any dynos? Um, dynoing is expensive. Uh, we do want to do it, but obviously you want to make sure your car's running 100% right. We're kind of that at that point where we still have things we want to do to our cars um, to increase the power and make sure the car's running 100% right and then kind of get into dyno tuning. Dyno, dynoing is last. You got to make sure the whole car in every factor is running right before you ball out on a dyno tune or just dynoing your car. When is the turbo build coming? Probably within a month and a half or a month, possibly two months. Once it's parked and uh, I'm not going to be taking it out anymore and it's ready to tear apart and put back together. Where's Ming at? Yo, those of you that remember Ming, you guys are OGs. Um, I wish Ming had more free time but he's working and he's always with his girlfriend too. So that's where Ming's at. Shout out to Ming. How do you actually pronounce locals or locales? It should be locals but the way it's spelled obviously it reads locales. Um, honestly at this point we don't really care. It goes as both locals or locales, um, whatever. It should be locals though, but whatever. All right, guys. So that's all for this Q and A. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, I didn't bore you. I'm not sure how long this is gonna be, but if you have any more questions that I didn't answer, uh, leave them below, and I'll reply to all of them. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any more questions, and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.